Can't believe it, man. It's our last half hour together right now. Uh, you're listening to Craig Peterson here on WGAN. Thanks for joining me and online, craigpeterson.com. Make sure you subscribe to my email list. You'll get all of the updates. You'll get my most important videos of the week. You'll also find out about when the nasties are happening like they're happening this week as well. So sign up, craigpeterson.com slash subscribe. I'd love to see you there. So we're going to talk about the biggest problem I think we as consumers have, we as business people have. And the lines kind of cross because businesses are holding our data. With this new California law that's been in place for consumer privacy and keeping our information kind of safe, letting us know what businesses have about us and requesting that it be removed, there's a movement afoot to really help get a handle on our personal information. You probably know that the Europeans passed a similar law that went in, in fact, it got teeth last year, went in a couple of years ago, just like the California law did uh, uh, last year. And these laws are rolling out all across the country. Uh, Massachusetts has it. The federal government is looking at a law similar to California's to pass on a national basis. So what this ultimately means is we could be in better shape as consumers and we could be in a lot worse shape as businesses. As we've been getting calls from businesses lately about how do I go ahead and protect myself as a business here? What do I have to comply with when it comes to this whole California consumer privacy thing, right? Very, very, very big deal. So how do we do this? Well, as a business, the simplest thing we need to do is start at the very beginning because the California law lets, an, lets a customer, a client, a prospect come to you and say, show me the data you have. But there are crazy teeth in place in pretty much every state now that if you lose their data, you are in even deeper trouble. Look at what happened with Equifax. Look at what happened with all, all, TJX, right? The TJ Maxx type companies uh, who lost tons of our data. Home Depot. They, some of these companies had really, really good security tools in place, but their people did not know how to use them. They couldn't read the reports. They had multiple vendors, tools in place. They didn't have just a single pane of glass. They didn't have the type of automated systems that really can get rid of the false alerts. And man, do we get a lot of false alerts every day, hundreds, thousands. My company, it, for our clients, we get tens of thousands, actually, now that I think of it, of these alerts every day. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely crazy. So you as a, an individual, whether you are just, a, well, just, right? But if you are a consumer or if you are a business, you have to patch. Now, it's painful, I get it. It is in nowhere near as painful as it used to be. You know, you used to install the Windows patch and, and it was like putting your, your marble on red in Vegas, right? The odds are what? 50-50, not even quite that, that you're going to win. Uh, it, it, it's crazy because you would install a patch and your machine wouldn't boot. And so now you had to spend days sometimes trying to figure out why won't my machine reboot? What can I do? I think I'll just get a new machine, but then I have to move my data over and do I have a good backup and write all of this stuff back and forth, the pros and the cons. So how do you do all of that? How do you make that happen? Well, today it's a lot less of a problem. Most of the time when Microsoft releases patches, you're okay. It's not like the Apple environment with a Mac where it's extremely rare that you ever have a problem with your Mac, okay, with an upgrade. It's extremely rare. So keep that in mind as well. Now, let's go back to this. So if you are a big business like an Equifax and you find out that there is a major security problem with, let's say, some of the middleware that you're using. Now, middleware is the stuff that sits 
between the front, which is typically the website or your customer service people, and the back end, which is typically your, your set of databases. Uh, so that's your middleware. So let's say that there's a patch for the middleware, which there was, and you look at it and say, oh my gosh, um, this middleware changes because usually when they issue a patch, it isn't like, hey, this is just a patch, just install it and you're fine. It's usually, hey, we've made a bunch of changes to improve things in our middleware or in our software or in our web, our web server software. We've made these changes. And as part of this, by the way, we fixed this other security problem. So when you as a business person now who have complex systems in the background and you're trying to do an upgrade in order to make sure that middleware is up to date or that database software or that front end software is up to date, it may not work properly anymore. In fact, it probably won't. So now you have to spend a bunch of engineering time to figure out, okay, so what do I have to change? Uh, wh what other components do I need to modify? How can I make this whole thing work properly again? And that can cost you a lot of money. So what a lot of businesses have been doing is burying their heads in the sand. And hopefully that's not you but burying their heads in the sand. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, 200 million US citizens data is out there because you have all of this inside information about people because you're Equifax, right? Now, people lost jobs when it came to, the, to these hacks I just mentioned earlier. And that's probably a good thing. But I, I also empathize with them because I do outsourced CISO, uh, Chief Information Security Officer, tasks for people. And I can tell you most of the people who are in these positions have in their drawer, right there next to them, their resume. So that if they do get hacked, they just pull out the resume and they start shopping around again because they know it's over with. And yet they could not get the authority from the business to do the upgrades and the updates. So I've, I have done this myself, right? You sit there and you say, oh my gosh, what's the win here? Uh, this is not gonna generate more revenue by doing these patches. And I'm just one of what, millions of companies worldwide that's using this software open source or otherwise. Uh, probably nothing I really need to worry about. So forget about it. I'm not gonna mess with it, right? You, have you fallen victim to that? I, I know I have. And that can end up being a problem and a real problem, depending on who you are. So businesses just aren't upgrading. And, and sometimes it's because they don't know, which by the way, is another reason to have my, be on my, um, my uh, newsletter list. It's absolutely free, but every week now, we're telling you, here's the top problems that are out there right now from a security standpoint that are being exercised right now by the bad guys in the wild. And if you don't have these patches done, you are in deep trouble. So that's easy to do. Just craigpeterson.com slash subscribe and you'll get those types of things. But we're looking right now, this particular article that came from Secure World Expo, they're talking about Pulse Secure VPN, which we don't use for any of our clients. We have a much, much better VPN software from Cisco, uh, but anyways, patches came out for this a long time ago, months in fact, and it turns out that most organizations have not done the patches yet. So be very careful here. If you're a member of a board of advisors, a board of directors, if you're a business owner, uh, if you have questions, reach out to me at craigpeterson.com. I'll do what I can but you have a responsibility. And now it's a fiscal responsibility. And coming June this year, depending on what kind of manufacturer you are, there are criminal liabilities tied into this too. 10 years in prison. So, hey guys, pull up your socks and start taking this seriously. So you'll find me online, craigpeterson.com. And of course, I'm right here on WGAN. And make sure you subscribe to that newsletter, craigpeterson.com slash subscribe. 
We'll be right back. 